So now we'll talk about total hip replacement. Pretty much a lot of the same information, except a different joint. What do I look for? What do I want to hear? I want to hear pain that's been going on for a long time. What's the first thing I look at when you come into my office and you have hip pain? I look at your range of motion. If you have, a de if you have decreased internal rotation of your hip and it's painful, it's most likely your hip. What do, I mean, what do I mean by internal rotation? First off, I have you sit down. I grab both of your feet and I turn it inwards. If one of them is able to turn in a lot more than the other, and you have pain in the one with decreased internal rotation, then you probably have osteoarthritis. Why do I say that? Well, internal rotation of your hip is pretty much one of the first thing that goes with hip arthritis. And you gotta be very careful with hip pain, because it can come from your back or it can come from outside your joint. Just because you have a bad hip x-ray doesn't necessarily mean you're going to need a hip replacement to alleviate your pain. So this is, an, uh, this is just a diagram of normal hip and an arthritic hip. Looks very similar to the knee as far as the cartilage damage and a lot of the osteophytes that, uh, that are around the joint. Again, you have cartilage damage inflammation of uh, your inner lining and you can actually develop a shorter limb in time if you had long-standing arthritic changes. Same, same types of uh, diagnosis as with knee arthritis. The osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, avascular necrosis, uh, septic joints as well as childhood problems that can linger on to adulthood. Um, arthritic cases, we went over this already, it's just going to skyrocket. Um, I mentioned the breakdown of joint, uh, joint surfaces already and the causes. Why do I have it? Well, because you've been on your hips for a long period of time. Um, people in construction, laborers, farmers, I, I, I see this all the time. Um, younger patients, and what I mean by younger, meaning in the 30s and 40s who come in with hip arthritis, have most likely had childhood problems. So how do we treat this? Same thing. Physical therapy. Um, I have taken patients in to the radiology suite if they have both uh, back symptoms and hip symptoms to see if it alleviates their pain. If I inject your hip and your pain is completely gone, most likely it is your hip. A high chance that it is your hip. If I inject your hip and your pain is better but not gone, then you have some pain in your hip that's coming from somewhere else, most likely your back. If I inject your hip and your pain is unchanged, either I missed or it's not your hip. So that helps me identify if, it, if in fact your hip is the causative agent uh, giving you this pain. So similar to knee replacement surgery, we cut out the bad parts and we replace it. And there are multiple stems that we utilize to replace a hip. This is just a couple of them. We can either cement it in or press fit them in. Now, depending on what your thigh bone looks like, most likely we're going to end up press fitting your prosthesis. If you're at past a certain age and your thigh bone up top is rather thin, you're going to end up getting a cemented prosthesis. So there's advantages and disadvantages which you can discuss with your surgeon once that time comes. Um, there are different heads that we put in different materials that we put in, which we'll get to in a, in a second. Um, here you can see the pelvis and the thigh bone, which has been cut. The top one shows that the pelvis has now been reamed and a metal cup has been placed in place of that. It's a ball and socket. And there's different cups as well. And your surgeon will go over the advantages, disadvantages, risks, and benefits of what cup they're using. Once the cup is placed and seated appropriately, a plastic liner is inserted, made from the same material 
that the knee liner is made of. And there's different liners that are utilized. So once the cup and the plastic is placed, the femoral component, which is placed into your thigh bone, is now placed. And this is either made through an incision in the front, the side, or the back of your hip. And it's all going to depend on your surgeon's preference. Then the head is placed. And just as in total knees, there are different heads that we use. Cobalt chrome, ceramic, oxinium, and different metals that are coming out. So this one just shows a cobalt chrome, oxinium, and ceramic head. Pretty much they're all good. Are some of them better than the other? Theoretically, some of them are supposed to last longer, but they pretty much all last, uh, last as long. Again, between 15 to 25 years. Um, there are different sizes of heads, ranging from 20, as small as 22 millimeters to as large as the cup that's placed in your pelvis minus six millimeters. That's as big of a head that you can put in. We're gonna look at some pictures as well. This is a minimally invasive surgery on a patient that I had with bilateral hip arthritis. I did both of her hips in one sitting. I don't recommend it for everyone. Um, this is the only one patient I've seen who was a candidate in the past year and a half that I've been here. But it worked out great. She's very happy with them. And with the instrumentation that we have nowadays, as well as the retractors, you can put your finger up in the air, your index finger, and that's pretty much how big their scar is. So their pain is less, their recuperation is faster, and their implants are placed in just as they would be with the larger incision. Uh, this particular patient, as I mentioned, not all people are candidates. Um, came into my office at two weeks and was very happy with their hips. Um, rated her pain as a zero on one side, one on the other. You can't compare yourself to everyone like that. Even if I did any patient in here, bilateral hips, you'd probably come in with one hurting more than the other. You'd be able to do that because you have something to compare to. Now, this is a implant for hip resurfacing. It's different than total hip arthroplasty. This one's mainly reserved for younger people. It's bone preserving. It's a larger incision. Um, it's more of a dissection that I like to see, but it works. Been out for about what, 13 years uh, in, in, a, in, different, in a different country. However, it's been out for about four years here, and the results have been promising. But the complications aren't that, uh, aren't that good when, the, when they do occur. Um, this is a model of a hip resurfacing. You can see that the cap is utilized to resurface the femoral head. The cup is essentially the same. Really the only difference is the cap that we use on the femoral head. And you can see here that the remainder of the bone is preserved. That's pretty much all it's for. It does show better stability because of the bigger head. There's differences in the wear because it's a metal on metal articulation as opposed to a metal on plastic articulation. And it's not for everyone. The metal on metal articulation isn't uh, recommended for patients who are childbearing age. Uh, kidney problems, or even metal allergies. So, like I mentioned earlier, I like to do this procedure in patients who are younger than 60, who are not necessarily um, good candidates for a total hip replacement, and I would use this procedure to sort of hold off the inevitable. With this procedure, you can still have a total hip, 
and have it sort of act like your index procedure. Um, I mentioned the advantages of the hip resurfacing earlier, bigger head size, that means your dislocation rate is going to be a lot less, and uh, the bone uh, conservation. So here you can see a conventional hip replacement where you have a healthy hip, you have your cuts that are made along the thigh bone, you have your implants that are utilized, and now an implanted total hip. The next slide, we're going to see what a hip resurfacing looks like. And you can see that the pelvis is, is done the same way. You remount the cartilage, you place a new healthy cup, and you basically resurface the uh, head on the thigh bone. You can see the differences in the cuts again. Again, what I'm trying to explain here is that it's a bone preserving uh, prosthesis, which shouldn't be, in my opinion, placed in patients greater than 65 or 70 years of age. I don't think there's a need to. Um, although it does have a good track record at 10 years, you're going to need another hip replacement. Why not get it at 65 to 70 and hope it lasts your lifetime as opposed to? being 65 or 70, knowing that you may end up needing surgery down the road. I wouldn't want surgery when I'm 80 or 85, so I wouldn't offer that to my patients. Now, when I mentioned that you can have a, uh, a hip resurfacing which can be converted to a total hip, this is what I mean. There are larger stems out there that are utilized for revision. This is pretty big. This is a normal step. So from here to here, there's really not much you can do after this. So when you do have your hip replacement, you want it to last your lifetime, or you want to make sure that you're only going to have one more surgery after this. Now the cuts here on a hip resurfacing are rather large, six to eight inches. Now you guys saw the uh, total hip incision that was utilized in that patient that I had earlier. Now she only weighed about 140, 150 pounds. So if you weigh more than that, you're going to have to add a couple more uh, centimeters to the incision. Um, but this is about 6 to 8 inches, which is around 16, 16 to 20 centimeters. It's a pretty generous incision. Um, and again, it's only to preserve bone and sort of delay the inevitable. After surgery, um, you're able to get up and walk around. You'll be utilizing a walker, transition to a cane, and pretty much at the end of around three to four months, patients are very happy. If you do have a sedentary job, you can go back to work within four to six weeks. I allow people to do that. Um, there are some people who have to. Otherwise, we'll take full three to four months to recuperate. And again, we see you in follow up after we discharge you from the hospital around three to four days. We'll see you at two weeks, remove the staples, make sure you're in therapy, maintain your motion, maintain your strength. See you back at about six weeks, three months, and a year after that. And pretty much that's it for total hip arthroplasty. It's pretty straightforward. You have decreased internal rotation, you have pain, shorter leg, your x-ray looks bad, you need a hip replacement. I want to thank you guys for coming. Um, I hope this helped. Again, if you guys have any other recommendations as to any other topics you guys would like to talk about or hear about, go ahead and write them out in the back on your way out. And uh, once again, thanks for showing up.